All right. All right. Thank you for tuning in. Um, so this episode is going to be somewhat similar to my Ibogaine trip story in Mexico. If you haven't seen that, please go check it out. If you haven't already, please just subscribe. Click the button below. Give the video a like. I could use the support. And to those of you who have subscribed, subscribed, I want to thank you now. All right. So today I'm going to be talking about getting trapped in a Scientology facility. And some of you may ask, some of you may ask, how do you manage to get trapped in a Scientology facility? I mean, how, how do you swing that? All right. As a, as a 23, four year old man at the time, how do you manage to do that? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you, we just started off by becoming, I, I, I was, I was down on my luck. Just like when I went to Mexico and did the Ibogaine, I was looking for help. And this place, Narconon, advertises themselves as a drug rehab. All right. And uh, that's where I went, Narconon in Colorado. Um, so uh, the first thing I see when I get there is an L. Ron Hubbard statue. I said, huh, it's a little weird. But I mean, maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know. Maybe they just, he's a good looking guy. I, I, I'm not quite sure, but they, they had a statue of him in, in, in the first thing you see when you walk in. That's a little fishy. I, I don't know. You know, if anyone's been to rehab, they take all your shit. They take your wallet. They take your phone. They take everything. Well, normally when you go to a facility for problems with, you know, drugs or anything, you go through a medical detox. Well, I had gone to a county detox facility, some shithole, but um, when I got to Narconon, well, they don't believe in modern medicine. So I was, they locked me in this building for six days. I had seven seizures. I went to the hospital several times. Every time I'd go to the hospital, the doctor would say, hey, he needs to be on certain medicines and the Scientology people, the Narconon people would say, no, we don't allow that. They can't have that. So now here I am in Colorado having seizure after seizure. I'm in bad shape and they have all my stuff. My life is in their hands. Okay. Long story short, the first 30 days that I was there after the detox period, the first 30 days there, you spend five hours a day in a sauna for 33 days. And you want to know what? You don't just get in the sauna. They give you massive amounts of niacin. And then they make you eat three broccoli, three celery, and three carrots. They make you eat those, drink 4,000 milligrams of niacin, turn beet red, run on the elliptical for 30 minutes, and then jump in the sauna. You jump in the sauna for 45 minutes, take a 10-minute break. 45 minutes, 10 minute break, five hours in the sauna, 180 degrees, playing cards, playing spades. The cards are just, they're just soaked. They're just warped from just human sweat. And we're just playing no music, nothing, just cards. And the cards were wrinkled. So you couldn't even get a good card game going. All right, so, and and the reason they do that is they want you to get all the drugs out of your body. Um, and it was it was pretty gnarly um, being, coming down off drugs, basically, and sitting in a sauna for fucking 36 hours a day. Uh, that was an exaggeration. It's not fun, especially with niacin. And the reason for the niacin is they say it flushes everything out of your system, helps flush everything out of your system. Okay, so, once I finished the... Um, the sauna program, I moved into the main facility. There was uh, about 40 people here. There was men and women. There was a men's wing and a women's wing. It was a pretty big campus. It was, it was like a, it was like an old middle school or something. It was in Colorado. It, this one wasn't in the middle of nowhere, but it was kind of, it was kind of far out and they just kind of made it hard. They made it hard to leave. I mean, we'll get into that later. They made it hard to leave. 
I'm talking lockdown doors, cameras with motion detection. And if you run and you try to, the property is pretty big. So by the time you get to the edge of the property, their cameras already alerted them uh, because I tried to run. I tried to run. I ran four, five, six times. And a couple times I got away, but they followed me. I mean, uh, well, I guess I didn't get away, but I got off the property. They followed me and they just followed me. There was one point where I was just walking down the train tracks for like six hours, hoping the train would come and just fucking hit me. And the dude, the Scientology dude was just following me. I'm like, dude, leave me alone. No, no. It just, we're here. We're here for you whenever you're ready to come back. Just come back, Craig. Just come back. Anyways. So what, a normal day looks like once you've gotten once you've made it through the sauna program is Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You are doing you are studying L. Ron Hubbard's work. There was eight books that we studied. You start with book one. And I'm telling you, there were there was classrooms, there was teachers, um, and they were basically teaching you these this literature, L. Ron Hubbard's literature. Um, and by the way, they didn't market themselves as a as a Scientology program. They just market themselves as a drug addiction treatment center. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this on the screen of what they are. Narconon International is a Scientology organization which promotes the theories of L. Ron Hubbard regarding substance abuse, treatment, and addiction. Uh, its parent company is the Association for Better Living and Education, which is owned and controlled by the Church of Scientology. Okay? And let me just remind you that they they would deny that they were pushing Scientology because they know that we are vulnerable drug addicts and we're not in our right minds. So they, they were... They were lying to our parents uh, when they would let you do a phone call. They would monitor it. And the minute you started saying, hey, mom, the, uh, this is some crazy shit. There's Scientologists pushing this shit on me. They would they would hang up the call and they would take over and tell your mom that you're crazy. Yeah, he's coming off drugs. He's a little schizophrenic. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about. Scientology. I don't know what he's talking about. So. Your family thinks you're crazy. Every time I would leave, my I would call my family and they would say, the guys over there told me that you're fucking up and you're you're on drugs. You're, you're not doing good. So they basically cut you off from your families. And that's how they get their, their grasp on you. They cut you off from your families and then they sink their hooks in. And I... Luckily, they never got their hooks in me. I, I fought every step of the way. By the way, my son's mother, that's where I met her. So, I mean, something good did come out of this. I had my son, and he's now five, and he's a badass. So, I mean, something good did come out of this. But, uh, um, yeah, that, that was not what I was there to do, but that's what I did. Yep. Anyways. So what a typical day looks like is 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, you're doing these books. Let me give you a little breakdown of what these books looked like. Book one, I I I I did the work up until like book six. There's eight books, but I can't tell you exactly what's in the books. But what I can tell you is basically what they were doing is mind control. They were doing some weird shit. So I kind of skipped over this. When I first got there, they would do, they would say, all right, we're going to do a session. And the guy would have a clipboard and you'd be like, okay, uh, looks like I'm doing therapy. This is not a normal therapy session, Craig. So I'd say, all right, whatever. Tell me what, you, tell me what to do. And he would say, he would just sit there and go, look at that wall. And I'd be like, what? He said, look at that wall. So I'd look over at the wall and he would say, thank you. Look at that whiteboard. I'd look at the whiteboard. Thank you. Look at that tree. Look at the tree. He'd say, thank you. 
look at that refrigerator. I'd look at the refrigerator. Guess what he said? Thank you. They would do this for hours on end. And the only way they would stop is if you had a breakthrough. A breakthrough. Oh, my God. I had an epiphany. Oh, my gosh. And they don't tell you that they're not going to stop until you come up with some sort of epiphany that somehow you feel better because of this shit. And I just wouldn't give in. I was like, dude, what the fuck are we doing, man? Like, I'm looking at the goddamn wall. What do you what? 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 And so that was basically the first training routine. That's what they call them. Training routines. That was basically the first one that they would do. Also, I, they had training ru- routines zero through eight. Sorry. One of the first training routines, I can't remember if it's one or two or zero, is they have you sit knee to knee with somebody. So you're stare. Imagine if you're sitting knee to knee with me and you just have to stare at them like this. And you cannot break eye contact. They started me at five minutes when I first got there. Guess how long I worked my way up? Four hours. They made me do that for four hours. And here's the kicker. They do four hours eyes open. So you're like this. Face to face with somebody. Eye contact. Right after that, you take a quick break and then you do eyes closed for four hours. And I'm telling you, they would just push this shit. And as you can imagine, this is why I would leave. I would, when I was, and they would sit there and watch you. They would test you. It was, there was tests. So in order to move on to the next book, you had to pass a fucking test. And part of the, one of the tests would either be like a clay demo or or the knee to knee thing for four hours. There was basically these things they called TRs, training routines, and you had to complete them to move on. It was fucking insane. All right. One of one of the training routines, this is crazy, was called bull, uh, bull baiting, bull baiting. So. You would sit there just like I said, like this. You can't move. When you're sitting there, when when you're doing the test, you can't move. Bull baiting is someone sits across from you and just talks shit. You pussy. Look at where you're at. You suck. Your mom's a loser. And they would say a lot worse things than that. And you had to just sit there. Couldn't laugh. They could say funny stuff too. Couldn't laugh. Just had to roll with it. And that was one of the tests. I believe it was the fourth training routine. I could be wrong. Um, One of the other training routines involved an ashtray. So they would put an ashtray in a chair in front of you. And you'd sit in your chair. And they would say, grab that ashtray. Grab the ashtray. They'd say, And then you had to command the ashtray to stand up. You say, stand up. And then you would lift the ashtray. And then you had to say, thank you. Sit down in that chair. You put the ashtray down. Thank you. Stand up. Thank you. Sit down in that chair. Thank you. On repeat. For hours, hours, they would not stop until they wanted, they would sit there and watch you and they just say, keep going. Don't stop until I say you're done. And they, I'm, I'm not kidding. I did that over and over for like three to four hours one time. And I, I I would have, I would have mental breakdowns and I would throw the, I, through a chair through through the wall i was th- i was threatening to kill people i said give me my stuff i for 4 months every day i begged for my id and phone back and wallet and they would not give it to me no there was no giving it to me 
And you want to know what? I feel bad because the workers that worked there were brainwashed themselves. A couple of them have committed suicide. Nathan and Sam, they, they both have committed suicide since I left there. Because I now I look back, they were trapped. They were stuck. I mean, this is a sick place. They advertised that they had a pool. They advertised all this great stuff. They sucked me in and then, and then that's it. They don't let your parents come see it. No, no family visits. That's not a thing. And uh, if, if your kids are in a rehab and they refuse to let you come see the facility, don't send them there. Yes, it's a good idea to not see your loved one for a while. Like you shouldn't have like visits with them for a while. But if you want to see the facility and they won't let you, they won't let you walk through and see the program, see what's going on. That's a red flag. Um, so um basically there I just kept doing that and oh and one of the one of the other training routines is you so you had somebody call, you had something called a twin so you were always working with your twin it was like it was like your partner like when you do the knee to knee staring you had a partner when you do the um bull baiting you had a partner and then when you do what I'm about to say now is you had a partner and funny enough my partner is my son's mother and I mean, it was kind of funny. I was just staring at her all day when I was doing the eyes open thing. That was the only thing that kept me looking. That was the only thing that kept me from looking away. You know, I was doing, I was just staring at her. You know, that's the only reason I was able to do it, to be honest, not to be weird, but whatever. So another one was you would, um, you'd both be standing and you would hold your partner's neck and then you would make them do stuff so basically like learning how to control people and you would do the same thing i spoke about earlier you would say look at that wall and then when they look you say thank you walk over to that wall and they would start walking but you're holding their neck so you're basically like controlling them once they get to the wall you say thank you touch the wall they touch the wall thank you over and over and over again and there was a facilitator just watching you do this and once again they just make you keep doing it over and over and over again until they decide that you're done and sometimes it was eight hours from 8 a.m to 8 p.m we were doing that shit and sometimes you would be doing it through lunch no breaks um anyways ah <sighs> that fucking place man such a piece of shit place um there's people that are dying there. I almost died there. I had seven seizures. I was in bad shape. They refused me a doctor. Um, you would think after the seventh seizure, they would get me a doctor, but no. Um, that is pretty much it for the training routines, which are called TR's training routines. There's some other ones, but I can't think of them right this second. So when I was there, I busted, I ripped my window out and ran away 10 times. And like I said, they would follow me every time. And they wouldn't give me my wallet, ID, no, nothing, no phone. So I would just go wander around Colorado and till I got desperate enough to go back. I would get desperate and go back. Well, um, it was my buddy's birthday coming up that was in the program. And Colorado State University was like down the road. And when we went on a walk one time, like the, the facility let us go on a walk like a couple times, I saw that Colorado State had like an off-campus apartment buildings there and they were just starting school. So there was kids everywhere, chicks out playing cornhole in their bikinis and here we are stuck in a fucking Scientology program just drooling oh man look at my life I'm a sad sack of shit anyways so it was his birthday coming up and we're like dude we're gonna dip let's it was a Friday we're gonna dip out and go party man so we kick our windows out four of us and we run over there to this um dude it was the craziest parties i've ever seen like it was just this huge apartment complex 
and there was kids partying everywhere. So we busted the window out of the Scientology facility and we ran over to Colorado State University and just started partying, getting lit, getting wasted. The Scientology, the dudes that worked at the facility showed up to the college party with the police and were sit, told the owner of the house, turn the music down. Hey, there's, and the kid that owned the house was like, hey, there's some douchebags from the Scientology place across the street. Get the hell out. And I, I go running. I ran from them. Long story short, I got super wasted. And then I just went back. I had nowhere to go. No ID, nothing. So I went back. Um, how I ended up getting out of there was there was a St. Mary's food bank down the street that I had noticed when I ran away the couple times. So I planned it. I got, I had a bucket hat, fucking bucket hat, camel pack, and I booked it. And I was like, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of here. I book it. I get to the St. Mary's place and I tell them, I go, I, I'm being persecuted as, as a Christian, man. I'm being persecuted here. I'm stuck in this Scientology place and they will not give me my stuff. And he says, oh, my friend, just hang out. This happens all the time. I'm so sorry you're going through this. That is terrible. That place is the devil. And long story short, he basically had me sign an affidavit and he helped me get my stuff back. I threatened to murder people there, man. And they would not, still would not let me go. So real quickly, before I end this, I just want to share a few things. I mean, this stuff is scary. Look, four deaths in three years. Advocates wonder why rehab centers still open. I mean, after the death of 20, I mean, there's just people dying left and right at this place. 4,000 milligrams of ni niacin and four at five hours in the sauna at 180 degrees. And this shit was insane, man. And when you would get in trouble, they would have you do something called an ethics cycle. And basically you had to like build these clay demonstrations of like what you did wrong. Um, they wanted you to do these workbooks about your behavior. They, they called these things clay demos. You basically build a couple clay characters and basically reenact whatever you did wrong, which in my case was throwing chairs through walls and threatening to murder everybody in my sight. So yeah, that I mean that's pretty much it. There's kind of a lot more to it. I was in, I ended up being there a total of four months. I got the hell out of there. Um, it was scary, man. And and the, what got me is I was just looking for a drug rehab that was not twelve step related because I I tried that. Anyways, um, that's all I got. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Late to Work podcast. Please subscribe, like, share. I love the support. Appreciate it.